Hey there, my name is Dr. Joy Nather Frankel, and today I want to talk to all of you parents out there. I know you've been there just like I have. A tantrum in the grocery store, a child getting really, really upset because you served them the purple bowl with the blue plate and they wanted it to match or be opposite. Something that is seemingly small that triggers this huge reaction. Maybe they've thrown their toy at you or their food at you. Maybe you've heard the dreaded, I hate you. Those situations are so difficult to deal with as parents. And when my mommy hat is on, I sometimes forget that I have a psychologist's tool belt that's completely full of techniques to help me in these situations. And so that's what I want to help you do today. Because remember, these little people, our children, have such big, intense, and powerful emotions that they don't know how to voice or deal with. These are feelings that come out in loud and unpredictable and sometimes aggressive ways, right? We see tantrums, impulsive actions like throwing blocks or toys, but what we don't see is why. Now keep in mind, our children have very little control over their environment and they have reactions to that environment, but they're not as lucky as we are as adults to have fully formed, fully developed brains and frontal lobes that allow us to name those feelings and those experiences. And so when they're acting out like that, that's a communication. They're trying to tell us something. And so we need to be able to take a deep breath, step back and help them through the situation. So today we're going to talk about a technique to really help them discuss these feelings, identify them, but most importantly, normalize them. Let them know these feelings are normal and they're okay. We want them to be comfortable talking about what they're feeling and experiencing. And we also want them to know that emotions are fleeting. So this really intense, powerful emotional wave that they're riding, it'll be over soon. These are not forever. So that said, let's talk about the technique. Name it, claim it, explain it. Now, what do I mean by this? So glad you asked. Step one, name it. We look at our children and sometimes inadvertently we speak for them. We see them crying and we say, why are you sad? Well, now I've just decided they're sad. What if they're mad and they're angry? What if it's just coming out as tears? And so we want to try and give them some space to be able to tell us what they're feeling. I may be mincing words here. That's what it may sound like. However, instead of saying, why are you sad? I could say, it looks like you're upset. That gives them the space to start talking about it, to help them build an understanding of their current feelings and be able to use it more in the future. So, okay, we want to help them name it. That's great. We've done that. Now we need them to claim it as their own. And so that's going beyond saying, I see that you're upset. Here's an example. Let's pretend my daughter is sitting at the top of the slide and she's waiting to go down. She's not quite ready yet. And her friend comes up behind her who really wants to go down the slide and, and pushes her down the slide. Well, my daughter is now hysterically crying. She's inconsolable. She's kicking her feet when I try and scoop her up. And so if I just say to her, hey, why are you sad? Well, that's not going to fully capture the experience right now. So now I can say to her, wow, it looks like you're really upset. And she's going to say yes, or she's going to say I'm sad or I'm angry. And then I can move into saying to her, okay, you feel this way. So now we move into the third phase, which is explain it. And explain it is a, is a twofold part. The first part is finding the trigger. And now we've done the sad. Let's talk about one of the more common things that you'll see is when your child's really angry or really mad. And I'm going to use the example of you not wanting to buy the extra candy bar while you're on the checkout line at the grocery store. That's my least favorite because then I feel embarrassed and I get frustrated with my kid and I may not respond in the best way. So in that moment, I try and take a deep breath and I go, okay, when you don't get what you want, it can make you feel angry. Are you feeling angry? Now I've made a connection. I've identified what the trigger was and connected it with their feelings. So instead of throwing the candy bar at me or using their fists or something, I'm letting him know I heard him, I see him, and I'm there with him in it. Now, if you have an older child, sometimes that's enough to sort of de-escalate the situation, just knowing that you're there and you're acknowledging the situation. But if not, looking at them and saying, so what do you think would help this be better? What might help you feel better? And no, you're not going to go and buy them the candy bar just to end the tantrum and, and have the embarrassment dissipate. 
but you can identify a safe place. You can pull over and talk about what's going on. You can find a place in your home or in the parking lot to have this conversation about what other tools you can utilize. You can offer breathing techniques. You can offer drawing exercises, maybe even just a physical movement silly break. Sometimes just singing a song. I'll tell you, I always keep a little pack of crayons and a notebook with me because that helps to de-escalate my kids in those situations. I'll say, draw me a picture about it, and as soon as we get out of the store, we can talk about it. If you have an even younger child, maybe a toddler, sometimes just having a special friend to cuddle, a stuffed animal or a blanket, that helps to de-escalate. And then you can talk about things rationally. They see the feeling dissipates and they can move on. So the next time those moments arise for you, I invite you to remember that your child is having a reaction to something and they're trying to tell you something. They're not just trying to be a pain and embarrass you. So in those moments, and maybe you can even save yourself a little bit of embarrassment and frustration in the grocery store, I invite you to encourage them to name it, claim it, and explain it.